cool. I got the baby in the background. So you're gonna hear baby music, YouTube, don't hit me for copyright, because it's just literally. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? Babe, if she gets a little upset, will you be able to grab it for me? Because I'm actually live right now. Yeah. Guys, welcome. We're inside today. Just did the live on Instagram while I was doing the live. We actually took a delivery that, which is too cool to not show you guys. Some of you know, if you don't, I am actually employed by Footcraft Survival. And I have a really cool assignment coming up. And they overnighted me a ton of stuff for this assignment that was kind of last minute. So, real briefly, just so you guys are uh, aware, I'm doing a pilot episode for like YouTube or Amazon Prime um, with one of our partners. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that, but it is what it is. <laughs> maybe I'm getting in trouble, maybe I won't. Anyways, so yeah, I'm gonna go shoot that and uh, a bunch of our products that are just starting to release. Uh, I got the, one of the first deliveries on it and there are, there are inventory, there is inventory at Fieldcraft Survival Headquarters. Um, if you wanna check that out, make sure you go to fieldcraftsurvival.com. These things sell out pretty quickly. So at, at the time of, what is it, today is the 21st. Um, you know, this is the stuff that I got here and I'll walk you through it and some of the, some of the, the I guess like the design features or even some of the reasons why the designer, uh, mainly being, you know, Mike Glover, uh, what his thought process was and kind of the stuff that uh, we use it for. So first and foremost, you can see on the top here, I have this awesome, awesome loadout bag. This is 0101. It has a water resistant material. It's actually really nice. It's kind of got that, um, that matte black look. It's got um, upgraded zippers. It's got all the, uh, the cool Phil Crafts Rival logos here on the ends of it. Uh, but this 80 liter bag is massive. I actually do have another one uh, that I use for like my clothing and I can just throw it in the back of my truck. It rained on it one time, it was totally fine. Um, like I said, they are water resistant. This is one of the first generations of it. I know that there, um, there are different sizes for the loadout. This being 0101. Uh, don't quote me. I, I could be wrong, but I believe it's like, I, I believe it's like uh, 20, 40, 60, 80 is the increments. Um, this one is the big one. This is the only one that we have in stock at the moment as I'm doing this video. So you can see how big it is. Uh, if you looked on my Instagram page, I did a video slash couple of pictures on it where, um, you know, my helmet for King of the Hammers was in here, my race helmet, all my gear, clothing. You know, it's just a really great, huge, huge bag for all of that stuff. And then we'll give you some protection, you know, from the elements like, you know, water resistant material. So that's it there. You see it's got this really great logo on the back of it, super big. And uh, I think the baby is ready to, to go. So there's that one. The next one that we're really excited for. <laughs> the next one that we're really excited for is the mobility bag. And this is technically, I want to say, well, I think officially it's either the third or the fourth generation. Probably the third. And what's really freaking cool about this bag is, one, it came about because of a necessity that that Mike had, Mike Glover. And, um, you know, he's the operator, he's the cool guy who did all that stuff. I'm just the mechanic, the, the, the vehicle dude in the group. But what's really great about being in mobility is, like I said, I get all the first stuff of this and I get to kind of sit down and be a fly on the wall and also contribute a little to some of these talks. So what's cool about this is the upgraded materials. It's a lot in the same of the, the loadout 0101. Uh, this is the mobility 0102. This is, like you see here, a backpack that you can wear and run it like that if you so choose. But what's really cool about it is it's designed to go on the back of your seat. So when you open it up, it's got, well, let me show you this. You see the logo on it. Again, the same water resistant material and then an area for a patch. So pretty sweet. Same thing in the back. There is a little bit of structure in the back that gives it its shape. Not much though. And then you have the carrying handle, but this also straps to the back of your seat. Uh, you know what? I believe I have, yeah, I think I actually have an episode where I outline the mobility bag, but it's like Gen 2, I think. So you can go back in my, um, my YouTube page and take a look at that because that's in there. This is essentially the exact same bag, only it's got all the new freaking cool material pieces. It looks a lot better. It's got all the cool... Um, uh, logos on it, but just totally the next gen, constantly improving. 
and constantly, you know, trying to make things better is how we do things at Foot Cross Rivals. So you can see here, it's still the same concept. This rolls up um, on the side here. Let's see if I can do this in a timely fashion. And then it clips on the bottom. It's got a little loop here with a metal clasp. I can't see. There we go. And you can roll that onto itself. I just did it real sloppily. It'll actually look a lot nicer when I do it the right way. And then this will go to the back. It will strap to the back of your seat in your vehicle, um, either on the on the back side of your seat, or I've even seen some like first responders or, or police officers roll it on the front and the passenger so they can easily access. So tragically, one of Mike's um, good friends, um, also an operator, I believe, if, if I remember this story right, passed away in a, in a motorcycle accident. And one of the things that happened when Mike was trying to render aid is back then, um, Molly was a little more of the standard than it is today. Although Molly is great, one of the big issues with it is it's hard to come on and off once you've already reweaved a Molly, um, whatever pack you have on there. So when he responded to the accident, he had to open up the bag and then pull handfuls of stuff out and then get over to respond, which um, isn't the best, right? You, you, wanna, you wanna be able to respond to things in a timely manner. And what's great about this bag is when it's a, a attached to your seat or where we have it, it blows off really nicely. So like this one, you can see here, in the instance that I'm talking about, let's say an emergency or whatnot, you do have um, the med bag, right? And you can see there it's easily labeled and it'll deploy very easily, but this Velcro is such that um, it's actually super strong. So you guys know that we just raised King of the Hammers this year for the first time. It was our you know, first entry into it in mobility. I was the co-driver. And we did have two of these bags inside of our race car, car 903. And we had one open and one closed. The one that was closed with this, with this hood that I just showed you in the beginning, I mean, you, no dust got into it. It was an excellent barrier. Nothing moved. Everything that we loaded in, it was fine. And we had tools. We had other various items that were heavy. Nothing came off in terms of the, uh, the Velcro. So, you know, king of the hammers, you know, we were out there 14 hours because, you know, we timed out. And um, these bags really lasted, you know, that test and lasted really well. So you do have one here. Like I said, it, it could be med um, the way it's lab labeled. Mine, typically, I run a survival kit. Um, actually... A survival kit like this from Field Cross Survival. You can check these out too. I'll open it real quick. It's got all like your uh, your bushcraft kind of stuff. You know, water purification. There's a, a blivet in there. Light. Um, some other survival gear. Typically, I like to run this kit. Paracord, uh, Ferrocom rod. You know, the uh, the waterproof tablet, stuff like that. A e -bl emergency blanket. So the survival kit that you can also purchase from Field Cross Survival. I typically run in my bags on that side. So I have med and then survival and then on the bottom. Um, I'll actually run a bigger uh, uh, med kit because I, I have kids everywhere, right? I have my foster son and then my three children and then two dogs and my wife. So, you know, typically it's fine to have like a, a basic med kit for bumps and boo-boos. And boo but if you're, you know, overlanding or you're adventuring or whatever it is, you do typically need to be more prepared. And that's what I do in this one is because I like to have a bigger or upgraded bag that'll facilitate that, or not bag, but med kit. So I'll go ahead and throw this down. You guys saw the, the uh, survival kit. Here's another one I am gonna run to in my truck, and I'll kind of explain that too towards the end. Uh, but like I said, so the basic hemorrhaging response kit from Phil Craft Survival, you can see here, all this stuff, like I said, is on the, uh, the website, can be ordered there. This is good for one person. And when you're looking at, <sighs> I wanna say the last statistics I checked were somewhere around 60,000 people perish um, from, uh, from bleeding out, right, from hemorrhaging. Uh, these kits not only will address that, but they're good for one person. So the extra pockets that you have, you know, you can buy several of these and they'll address that. But specifically, if you're looking for something rather than piecing together your own kit, uh, we have what's called the Vehicle Trauma Response Kit. And what's cool about this is it will facilitate that, again, for one uh, person. So I do tend to have these bumps and bruises, hemorrhaging, long limb injuries, like when we we're doing King of the Hammers. Those are some of the things that typically you're going to see in car crashes. Uh, crushing injuries and stuff like that, um, you'll be able to address. And then also the, uh, the cat tourniquets, cat tees. I really like these. Uh, these are the standard now. And, you know, just remember you need one, at least one for each limb. So 
Again, there's plenty of places for you to store them. Also in your vehicle, I have advisor panel and stuff like that. You can see in my other videos. Uh, these are also a good idea to have. Um, in our King of the Hammers video, if you go back to the Fieldcraft survival page, you'll see that one of our, our medics, actually he's a, he's a paramedic, uh, Austin Savage we call him, um, set up our rig and we went through our, our little uh, pregame there and he showed us where all these were at. And these are typically Velcroed in. You guys know I love Velcro and Multicam Black. And you know they were everywhere just in case of the event that we did have an accident or mess ourselves up within that race. Um, you know, we're not really worried too much about, let's say, you know, uh, puncturing injuries in the core. Like I said, it's just more of like that long limb in, in, if you like flail and stuff and flip and whatnot, that's what you're looking at. This will address hemorrhaging as well as the kits. Um, the other cool thing about the VTRK is that it also addresses burns, which is inherent. Um, it's an inherent risk or danger. I mean, all these things are real minimal uh, in the risk factor where you're just driving, but, you know, to be prepared. You do need a kit that will be able to do that. So there is a, a couple of things in here that will address, you know, some minor burning. Remember, you're literally driving in a combustion motor driven vehicle. You know, there is potential to get a chemical burn, you know, a temperature burn where you're reaching in and touching something that's hot. You know, this is a good, um, uh, a good kit to have because it's already thought out, right? Maybe you buy several of these and you have them throughout. Um, at least have one per person, like I said, when it comes to that. And this is actually in, in, in partnership with North American Rescues. Those guys know what they're doing. Um, and they've, you know, been there, done it. They live the life. They are, you know, medics and, and paramedics and, and medical staff that manage that stuff pretty frequently. So I showed you my basic, basic hemorrhaging response kits and the cat tourniquets. Um, one thing that I do also in conjunction with these cat tourniquets is I also typically have a couple of rat tourniquets. And I know that's a little controversial, but if you're a parent and you have children or you have dogs, these are actually too big and you cannot create uh, the pressure that you need on smaller children or animals. So that's where the rat comes in. Uh, this is like a, it's almost like a strap that goes on, you tighten the windlass and it creates that surface area. Whereas a rat is like almost like a, it's like a stretchy material that you create surface area by constantly, or not constantly, but getting yourself wrapped up several times and that creates the force that you need to uh, address a hemorrhage. So don't forget, those are some tips there if you want some extra medical stuff. And then this is what I'm actually really excited for. I'm gonna throw this box down. So I wish I could zoom that in. I can't see who is that. Javier, sorry, man. I, I saw that you commented, bro, but it's so far away that I can't, I can't see it. This is a new um, product by Fieldcraft Survival. And this one has been Super exciting because it's really taken some time to develop. And if you guys can see here, this is our cat tourniquet holder. And this one says multi-cam black. They're both in multi-cam black, see? My homies know me. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Robbie P. And what's cool about this is there, there are a couple of different options in the back to, to either hang it um, on a molly or um, like on the molly panels there for your bag or on your belt, on your plate carrier, if, if you're an officer or whatnot, and you can see, let me, let me come this way so you can see how cool these things are. And what's really great about it is it does give you retention. You can see here how it's hard. You got the Fieldcraft logos in it, and then you can change the back area there if you want to mount it in certain uh, places. Let me see, I don't know if I have enough time. Like I said, I just opened this stuff up. Here's the other one here. Uh, if I can get this tourniquet open. Now again, this isn't staged, this is straight out of the box. Here we go, let's see if I can do this. And, yeah, there we go. What's cool about it is the level of retention it has, but it also offers uh, this little cover right here on the Velcro, which sometimes tends, well, if you've had cats long enough or you carry them on your body or if it's one of your everyday pieces, you know, these Velcro areas tend to attract a lot of stuff. And it could be, you know, just lint or hair or you know, dog hair or whatever. And what's cool about it is one of the cool pieces about the, this and the way that uh, we set it up is it covers that to eliminate some of that um, from happening. So uh, that's what's cool about it. You can see how it fits. It gives you a little bit of retention. You can see, obviously, it's not going to come out. I'm shaking it pretty hard. It's not moving at all. You have to kind of get in there and yank it out like that before it'll release it. So that's really cool. I got two of those. Um, 
for this unboxing. I'm not gonna open that one because it's the same. But this is something that I, I haven't had a chance to look at yet, so I'm actually really curious. And this is um, one of the new gens of holsters. You can see there, it's got a little bow clip um, that we're making. So this is actually for a 48. Yeah, so this is for a, a G48. You guys know that we love Glocks in Fieldcraft Survival. I'm a fanboy for sure, running them now for several years. And um, this is a nice little piece here uh, that I've pretty much finished up. I'll go ahead and show you guys that it's safe. There you go. Nothing in there. Pretty good. And then here is the G48 holster. It will fit a 43. And then that's in there, super nice. And then you can tuck it out of the way. So that's my unboxing. I got a, little, a lot of really great stuff for this trip. Uh, hopefully that pilot is going to be released in a timely manner. You guys know that last year uh, I did shoot and was staff on a History Channel A&E show um, that was in conjunction with uh, Land Rover, Overland Journal, and History Channel A&E. They just released that episode um, two days ago on the FYI network, but I think it was just a like a live broadcast, live broadcast, broadcast, jeez, streaming event. <laughs> and um, they're doing uh, the actual episode again on the History Channel on the 24th, which I believe is Friday. So that'll always be there if you, if you take a look at it. It's something like, it's something to do with overlanding. I have a post on my Instagram if you wanna check it out. I am not in that show at all, but what's really funny about it is I'm really curious to see how they're gonna edit everything because at the end of the show, we did this really cool uh, cooking scene uh, that I was actually responsible for managing all the, <laughs> the cooking stuff at the end. I was the camp master, right, for, on, on staff. And uh, we did this really cool lamb shank at the end there, that's this Australian tradition. The host is actually Murph, he's, he's from Australia, and um, he wanted to do this really great dinner to culminate this awesome seven day trip we did. I mean, we were through Kanab, Utah, the rim of the Grand Canyon, you know, we slept in tents and overlanded for seven days. Freaking rad experience. Um, like I said, I was just staff in the background, but I'm really curious to see how they do the, uh, the final scene because there was, <laughs> there was instances to where he's talking about traditional Australian stuff, Australian food, and then would like say something, and then like my hand would be like handing him something under, <laughs> under the, uh, the camera. So I, I can't wait to see how that all plays out and, and how they edit it. But that's what I got today, guys. Everything you, can, everything you see here, you can get at Fieldcraft Survival. I'll keep you updated um, on to when the pilot that we're shooting uh, this, this weekend will be released, and I'll catch you on the next one.